After years of anticipation, Nas finally joins Drink Champs. This was probably the biggest episode of Drink Champs that Nori has ever had. These are two get three guests that I really wanted him to get was Nas, Cameron, and Prodigy. Rest in peace. So, after years of negotiations and years of finally landing Nas, this was a big deal. It was a big deal because Nas rarely does interviews these days. Nas is really the type of guy that doesn't really let loose on interviews like that anymore. He's very more guarded now because he's at a different stage of his life. And plus, the media has changed for the worst part. We in this Breakfast Club, DJ Vlad era where being provocative and causing conflict and controversy is the wave right now. So it makes a lot of artists very reluctant on wanting to do interviews these days because they don't know if these guys are trying to use them for clout, use clips for clout, because, or create a viral moment for that matter. Because that's what made The Breakfast Club what it was, viral moments. So the pressure is on new content creators and interviewers to follow the same formula if they want to eat. So Nori finally bring Nas up there. And I thought he did good. He did good, but it seemed like it wasn't really an interview. It seemed like it was more so like, I ain't talked to this nigga in 20 years, so I'm just trying to recapture on a lot of things. But there's some things that I felt that he could have asked and that, that he left out. I don't know because Noe's brains was fried off of drinking, but... What I would have asked him, I would have asked him what made him want to consider signing with Murder, Inc. That's what I really wanted to know, because that situation there was very puzzling. He was very entertaining that in 2002, signing with Murder, Inc. I would have asked him also, why hasn't he worked with AZ in almost 10 years? I would have also asked him, what is his thoughts about people saying that he doesn't have a great ear for beats? Like, people like DJ Vlad, for example, they constantly get on Nas for not being the best beat pack picker. I would also ask them, what's the relationship status with DJ Premier? Because him and Premier, they haven't worked together since, God knows, um, Stillmatic with Second Childhood. There were some questions like that on touching base on where he's at currently with certain people that he worked with in the past. Because I just find it odd that he hasn't worked with Premier in a long time. But considering what it was, a lot of people would say it's light. It kind of was light based off of comparison. But we got to understand the dynamics of business now that Drink Champs has linked the deal with Tidal, Revolt, and now Mass Appeal. So we may start seeing Nas there more. So it was just like I was saying on an interview with Unscripted Network. It's a relationship-based business. Everybody's trying to protect the bag. So you're not going to really get a lot of out there unorthodox questioning anymore. Plus, it's also a case of where these guys are in their 40s. Nobody want to talk about what his thoughts was when Jay said this. That was 20 years ago. But I would, if he was going to bring up Jay-Z, I would ask him, like, how is your relationship with him now? Like, what have you learned from him? And what does he learn from you? Because they have a high regard of respect towards one another. So, that's my take on it. I felt that he did a good job, but it was a bit too safe. And if he didn't want to provoke any beef issues, which he doesn't have to, he could have asked the questions that I already suggested he asked. Because we already heard the beefs about Jay-Z, we already heard the back and forth about Court Mega, Tupac, and Central Park. Nas has already explained this. I don't understand why a lot of people want to hear those stories again. Everybody knows that. Even Nas said out of his mouth on different outlets. So, there's no need to keep on rehashing the same thing. But, it seems like that's what people want to hear all the time. But, I like the fact that they also focus on the music part. 
how do you know the how Queens was looking when KRS one shut it down with the bridge is over. Illmatic, the impact of Illmatic was major at the time. The Biggie story was pretty funny. The Wu Tang story was pretty funny. It was overall good, but I'm thinking that part two, if he has a part two coming, it's gonna be better. So that's my thoughts on the Drink Champs interview. It could have been better, but overall it was good for what it was. So subscribe to the network. Hit the like button. Y'all know what to do. Holla back.